Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I've got my tray table out and I'm set up for a manicure. So I just removed my old polish and I applied base coat to get things started. This is the Strong Start base coat from Essie. And I'm just gonna polish my nails and keep this really casual, sort of chit chat style. And hopefully it'll feel light and fun as we talk through money. And I know money sometimes comes with worries and anxiety and stress and tension, but I don't want that. I want this to be enjoyable. So many of you who are either parents already or you are soon to be parents have asked for this video um, where I share about what my husband and I are doing to plan for our kids' financial future. And we have two kids. We have have a daughter who is almost 13 and a son who is 11 at the time and they're getting older and so we are really actively teaching them about money management we started since about the age of probably about six or seven years old when they can really understand some basic concepts you know piggy bank that sort of thing and now we've moved on to more advanced concepts so i'm going to share with you what we teach what we role model we are still figuring it all out we're not experts by any means so if you have any tips or advice to share with a fellow mom please do leave a comment down below because i would love to learn from you all as well and then i'm going to share with you concrete things that we've done in terms of opening accounts savings investments uh, specific things that we're doing to set them up to have a good start in life financially all right, so I'm going to open up my little vanity here. This is where I keep my nail polishes. I think many of you have seen this in previous videos, but this is an Hermes dust bag that was repurposed and created into a vanity bag. This was made by a woman named Yuka. I found her on Instagram. I think I still have a promo code that is valid. If it is, I will be sure to link it down below. She makes bucket bags and tote bags and all kinds of really cool creative uh, products and they're all made out of authentic Hermes dust bags. So it's really cool. So here's what it looks like on the inside. It's got the netting as well and a zippered compartment. You can see here, she even puts like hardware. I keep my little nail file in here. And I know some of you have asked me to make a dedicated video going through every single color that I own in terms of my nail polish collection. I won't do that today because we'll run out of time, but this is what I've got so far. Plenty, too much, I think. Uh, this is the color I'm going to use today. It's from Essie and it's called Bikini Sotini. It's one of my favorites. So let me just move this out of the way, move this all back. This nail, by the way, if you're wondering why does it look so funky, because it chipped under here and I couldn't clip it because it's under my skin. So I actually had to go to the nail salon, which I don't go to very often. I like to do this at home. And I asked them to put the powder and the gel to sort of seal it because my nail needs to grow, get beyond that point of chipping and then I will cut it down. So that's why it looks kind of funny. Okay, so let's get started. The very first thing that we do to plan for a bright financial future for our kids is actually to put ourselves first. That sounds probably counterintuitive and a little bit selfish perhaps, but we believe wholeheartedly that in order for our kids to be financially free in the future, free of burdens, that we as parents need to be financially healthy so that we won't worry them or you know burden them or create any undue stress on them. So I've been hearing people talk about, like in the news and in the media, how they're giving up their retirement funds or they're not able to save for their retirement or they are dipping into their retirement fund early and realizing a penalty when they do so in order to support their kids. And maybe it's you know for a great cause, like sending them to college or helping them pay down their... I don't know, their mortgage or buy their first home. But I think if you could avoid that and really focus on securing your own future, your own retirement, that's the best way to go because your kids can always get a loan for school. They can get a loan or mortgage for their first home. You can never take out a loan to retire. There's no system that says, here, you can take out half a million dollars to live off the rest of your days without working. I just made up that number. It's just not, it's not there. So what we do is we max out our savings. You guys know if you've watched my previous videos, we're quite aggressive with our savings. We save more than we spend in terms of the category of like 
unnecessary non-essentials. So we've always tried to keep an eye on that and try to keep our savings higher. And we max out wherever we can the, t the tax savings vehicles. So for example, 401k through my company, IRAs, my husband is self-employed, so he uses the SEP, S-E-P IRA. And just, you know, figure out ways to reduce taxes and maximize savings. HSA or flexible spending accounts that have tax, tax benefits. There's so much out there. There's probably more that I don't know about. So please do educate me if you are an expert in this area. And that's what we do. We take care of ourselves and we create a buffer and we have an emergency fund and extra savings and a diverse portfolio and we try to increase our investments and we try to just be disciplined. So that's the first category. Second is role modeling what our principles are in terms of money management. So for example, from as far back as I can remember, I would teach our kids about the importance of living below our means. So my son in particular asks a lot of questions about money now that he's older and he's just got an interest more so than my daughter. And he would ask, could we buy this? Can we afford this? And a lot of times I would say, sure, we can, but we choose not to because it's not important to us or it's not a priority or we'd rather spend on something else. And it teaches him that just because you can afford something doesn't mean you, you buy it. Just because you can spend the money doesn't mean you do it. So this idea that you can have more money just sitting there, just for peace of mind, and that you lo you're, you're living below your means, is something that we teach our kids. We also like to teach them delayed gratification. My kids love books. We're in danger of being book hoarders. So I'm a big fan of the public library. And we get, I don't know, stacks of books every week. They kind of devour them. When they were younger, we'd go to bookstores and we'd browse. And they would pick like a million books. And they would want to take them all that day. And they want to read it all that night. So what I started doing was I would say, hang on, let me check to see if any of these books are available at our local library. And I go on my app and I would check. And if they're there, I would say, okay, let's just go pick them up at the library. Or let's put them on hold and pick them up next week. Or if they're not at the library because it's a new release, let me check on Amazon or some other site to see. Is it cheaper? Is it on sale? Oftentimes it would be, you know, 10, 20% less than the brick and mortar store. And I'm all for supporting brick and mortar stores. So I always say when you walk into a bookstore, you at least buy one thing to support if you spend a lot of time in there, but we're not gonna buy 16 books. So, oh, what is this little cotton ball fuzz? Ugh. So then my kids would, you know, they're kids. They'd be like, what, we have to wait? I'm like, listen, if I ordered this from Amazon, you get it in 24 hours, that's Amazon Prime. You can wait 24 hours. Or you can wait three days for the library to bring this book back into circulation. You can wait two hours to walk over to the local library when we're finished doing this and pick up the book that, it, that you want. Delayed gratification. So now they're used to it. And actually they say, Mom, I want this book. Could you check if it's at the library? <laughs> they do it on their own. And also when they were younger, they would see things in the store aisles when we check out and they, they'd grab, I want this. Can I have this? I mean, I'm talking when they're really little. Or we'd be browsing and just walking around, enjoying time as a family and they would say, oh, look at that, I want that. And all we say, and my husband and I, we had agreed to this in advance, when my kids were like, oh, really little, like toddlers, I think. We agreed to say one thing. Today is not a shopping day. That's it. Today is not a shopping day. Meaning, not every day is a day where you just randomly, aimlessly, mindlessly buy stuff and spend money. Sometimes you're just out to enjoy being out. Sometimes you enjoy just looking. Sometimes you're looking for someone else, and that doesn't mean you have to pick up something for yourself as well. Right? So today is not a shopping day has worked well for us versus what I think sometimes parents say, 
is no, that's too expensive. No, we can't afford that. No, you have too many of those. And it's just like, it becomes kind of like a battle. And we have found that a simple statement like today is not a shopping day has worked wonders. And it teaches them that you don't just impulsively buy everything you see. So there's that. So it's just a lot of like role modeling, what role modeling, what we believe in. I got to do a second coat. Look at this because of the, the gel part, or I don't know the powder part just on this nail. You see that line it's kind of funky, whatever. I'm not going for perfection. Okay. And also we like to role model or I do, cause I'm kind of, I'm kind of kooky in that I really enjoy saving. So I talk about how fun it is to save. I'll show them, you know, interest rates going up now that they can understand basic concepts. I will talk about free money. You know, interest is free money. You put it in the bank, you get money for doing nothing, just parking it there. How does that work? They ask questions. I share with them. Okay, this is how banking works. This is interest. This is inflation. This is credit. This is debit. So, I don't know. I think sometimes people feel like if you can't spend, you're depriving yourself. But I feel like if you don't spend, you can also just enjoy the saving part. There's, there's enjoyment in that. Saving and investing, growing. Okay. Then the third category is like actually creating a financial buffer or safety net for our kids. So we do have 529 plans for each of them. We opened them when they were very little. Those are just their college funds. And it's a great tax savings vehicle if you use it for education purposes. So we religiously put money in there. And then we have brokerage accounts. I'm the guardian, but the accounts are under each of their names. And we opened them, I don't know, a few years ago. And that's when I started teaching them about investing in the stock market and why you may want to do that and what the benefits are and what the risks are. And so at first, my son had a lot of opinions about what he wanted to invest in. So that was interesting. And then we talked about fees and transactions and index funds versus mutual funds versus individual stocks versus ETFs. Like we just, we just get into it, but I break it down in a very simple way. No financial mumbo jumbo, no jargon because I'm not a finance person. And so they have that going and they get excited because they know they're invested in the stock market and they know their money is moving up or down, but there's growth long-term. And so we can have interesting conversations about that. And they also know this is long-term. They don't, they don't see it as like play money. They know they can't touch it. They know that it's a way to be disciplined and kind of stay the course. So that's been, that's been kind of cool to see them get older and understand all of that. And then I just, we teach them like basics, like how to balance a checkbook. So that's, I guess, in the fourth category, concrete, basic learning about these things. So we created a little like handmade checkbook for each of them. And we give them allowance each week. And they manage their checkbook. They write down their debits and their credits and their balance. And it has to all balance out. It has to make sense. So they know when they don't have enough in their checkbook and they want to actually spend some, th some of that money and they're short, they have to wait to earn their next week's allowance. Um, sometimes my husband and I would laugh because my son would come over and be like, okay, I'm $11, sh I'm $11 short. He'd show us the checkbook and he would say, can I like borrow $11 or can you advance me, basically pay me in advance um, next week's allowance now so that I can have that $11. And so we'd say, no, you work with what you have. You're not going to go into debt. And if you do want to go into debt, are you willing to pay interest to get the money up front? I mean, it's all kind of jokey, but it's reality. That's how the real world works. You don't just go to the bank and say, could you, could you just give me some money now? So he understands. So then he's learned patience. And again, that's delayed gratification. So that um, they come to the ATM with me ever since they were little, they know, you know, how does money come out of the machine? Did you put money in? Like, how does that? So just the fundamentals of banking, the concepts there, they understand. I think this is all really important because it's not about just having money set up for them. They need to understand how it got there, what to do with it, how to care for it, how to use it wisely, 
how to continue to grow it so it doesn't just sit there like, oh, mom and dad set up this money for me and then now that's that, I'm going to spend it. No, you want to be a good steward of your money, right? So all these little things kind of add up. So that's the fourth category, the teaching of the fundamentals, um, teaching about compound interest. I mean, I love playing with the compound interest calculator. And um, inflation is a big topic these days because they hear it a lot. So they ask questions about inflation. We talk about the rising costs and what, what we do about that, how to offset that and how to look at that from a big picture perspective and not to be freaked out or anything like that. Um, oh, did I just? Yep. I just did that. This is hard because when I'm talking, I'm not. Usually I paint my nails super fast, but I'm slow because I'm talking at the same time. And distracted but there's a fifth category and that is credit building up their credit okay this is how I do it so like I just blob some on I give it a minute and then I repaint over it and hopefully it won't be too thick so they each have credit cards do they know they have credit cards Mm, oh, they do actually. I did mention it, but they, they can't touch it. They don't even know where it is. They've never used those credit cards. They each have credit cards in their names. I will eventually give it to them as they get older because it's probably safer for them to carry around credit cards versus cash. But we open those credit cards just to start building their credit history, just so that they, they can have an early start to having strong credit. So if you as a parent have really good credit, I'd say like, you know, 700s at least, 800, wonderful, but you got to have solid credit and you call your credit card company and you say that you would like to add your children as authorized users and they'll give you the whole spiel of like, you are responsible for paying all the bills, no matter who uses the card, whether it's your child, whatever, because they're a minor, you're hundred percent responsible for everything, but they will issue a fresh credit card under your account, same exact number, all the information is the same, just in their name as an authorized user. And the minute you do that, if you keep your credit healthy, your child now has their own credit history and the clock starts ticking. The longer the credit history, the better. Because if they get older and they're looking to make or qualify for a loan, buy a home, start a business, whatever, and their credit is important, and lenders and bankers are looking at that, they will see a very long credit history. They will see a healthy credit because they've been riding on yours. If you have bad credit, don't do this because you're basically just passing on your bad credit to them. Only if you, if you have really good credit, solid credit, you pay off your debts, you're on time, you manage well, your debt to... Um, credit line ratio, like how much you actually spend on your credit cards is really low because um, that all factors into your credit score. If you have good credit, why not pass that on to your kids? Because technically they cannot open credit cards until they're 18, but they can absolutely be authorized users on your credit at any age. So you can start like now. If your child's two years old, you can still do it. You could just cut up the credit card or hide it. They don't need it but you're behind the scenes building credit for them. So that's the fifth kind of like concrete thing we've done. So just to recap, take care of ourselves, max out our savings and investments to the best of our abilities, role model what is important to us in terms of principles like living below our means and delayed gratification and you know how saving can be fun. We also, by the way, I didn't mention, bring them into how being generous can be fun. Donations with their time, money, energy, resources. Um, they also donate from their allowance. So they get that feeling of how good it is to give. So all of that, role modeling, all of that, bringing them into it, involving them as a family. Then concrete steps to create a nest egg. So we use 529s and a brokerage account so that they're active in the stock market. We also have traditional savings accounts, but it's not active because... I'd rather them put their money in the stock market because they have such a long time horizon to make more money that way. And the fourth is teaching them the fundamentals of how a bank works, how a checkbook is balanced, credit, debit, ATM, interest, inflation, compounding, like all of that once they get older. And I think they're old enough to understand that in elementary school. That's when we started, like seven, eight years old. 
And then last is make sure that you help them build a healthy credit and let them free ride off of your good credit if you can. So those are the five concrete steps. I feel like I must be missing something. There's probably more that we can do. So if you're doing something really cool and smart, please, please let us all know. Please let me know. I want to learn more. This video is kind of an amalgamation, a commu, a commu, a commu, a commu. What am I saying? It's cumulative. <laughs> it's an accumulation of just things I've learned along the way and through my own reading and research and I don't know, I kind of just dumped it all on you guys and I'm hoping that it is helpful. And let me know in the comments if you're doing anything um, from this list of five already. I'm sure you are. I'm sure, I'm sure you are. And anything new from this list of five that you plan to start implementing after watching this video? I'd love to know. I have to say, my personal finance videos get a lot of interest, but, and, you know, great comments and follow ups. And some of you message me privately thanking me, which is so nice. But in terms of views on this channel, you can see for yourself the views are very low. I guess because people want to see luxury unboxings more. I don't know. But that's okay. Because I feel like if I make these videos and it's helpful to even five of you out there, it's worth it. It's worth it for me. So I'll keep making them. I'll sprinkle them throughout my channel. Of course, I still do fashion and luxury and fun stuff. But this is fun stuff too, isn't it? I think it's fun. Learning, growing, saving, investing, thinking about your kid's future, thinking about your future. I think it's all fun stuff. I hope it doesn't create any stress for you because it doesn't need to. You can choose to make it fun. I think that's all, you guys. I'm done. I did it. Da -da -da -da. Top coat is on. I just need to dry and then clean up. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.